the marketing agency software stack. Now as a marketing agency owner, tools don't make the man, but they definitely help increase the output of your work and just the general workflow and enjoyability of your workspace. So I'm gonna walk you through the essential stack of tools and software that I use in my day-to-day, -day, and I recommend that you check out some of these for yourself as well. Now, if you don't already know who I am, my name's Shade Theory, and I'm the co-founder of acquisitiongrowthpartner.com, and we help establish marketing agencies at an additional 60 to $120,000 a month within six to 12 months using our AI acquisition system. Now, let's get into it. Now, before we get into the specific tools or software, we first need to define the tasks that we're gonna be doing so we can figure out what tools or software that we actually need. So we need something that helps us build landing pages, we need something to send and sign agreements. We need something to send email outreach because you don't want to be sending manual outreach anymore. That's going to take too much time and energy and people are going to be 10xing, 100xing the amount of volume that you're doing. So you're going to lose out on that front as well. We need something to help us write SOPs, communication with team and clients, conducting online meetings. So when you book appointments, you need to catch up with a prospect, catch up for them over a, you know, a call online instead of just a phone call. Um, something with for content creation. This is important, especially moving forward in 2023, where markets are becoming more and more saturated. The way that you differentiate yourself, yes, you can add things to the product, new, new unique mechanisms, but personal brand can help you stand out apart from the rest because it allows you to build trust with your audience or your potential ideal clients on autopilot before they even hop on a call with you. So you definitely need a tool for content creation making thumbnails and presentations. So that'd be just like a thumbnail for YouTube video or thumbnail just for general content and then also presentations for when you're presenting to clients. Uh, you need something to help you scrape leads, something to take payments, tracking important business metrics because if you're going based off of how you feel rather than the real numbers, well, your business isn't gonna be very predictable. You need to be tracking every important metrics from the outreach, the sales stuff, everything like the cash collected, your accounting, all that sort of thing. I've got accounting here as well, storing important files, verifying lead lists, and writing. Now, something that helps you build landing pages. Now, there's a few options. So card, if you're just starting out, you have zero dollars to your name and you want to, something that's relatively low cost, card is a good place to start because it's $19 for the entire year. You don't have as much functionality as the other ones and you don't have all the bits and bobs like with click funnels and go high level. However, if you're just starting out, you probably want your overhead costs to be as little as possible so that you're actually running a business at a profit rather than a loss. So card will be a good spot to start if you're just starting out. Now click funnels, you can go with click funnels. I used to use click funnels back in its heyday, back before 2.0. But ever since Go High Level came out, I'm just using that. Using the $97 plan, uh, when I used to run a real estate marketing agency, I would use it for my clients as well. So that would be like $297 a month. And now I just use the $97 a month plan because one, it pretty much does everything that ClickFunnels does. Plus it has more functionality for the same price. So you'd be stupid to uh, go with ClickFunnels instead of Go High Level, unless you're trying to optimize for you know that Guru Award that everyone loves, you know that one million dollar uh, CD or whatever it is that you get once you hit a million dollars in sales. So if you're trying to optimize for that and maybe you're peddling a course, well then hey, ClickFunnels might be the way to go. Now sending and signing agreements, uh, you've got PandaDoc, which is a popular one. You've got HelloSign. I'm pretty sure it's called. Dropbox now or Dropbox sign. I think the company was sold, so it might be something called something different. And you've also got DocuSign, which you can also use. Uh, they're all pretty similar price point. I like to use HelloSign. Um, when you're starting out, like you don't have to sign up for a paid plan, so you can get like three free contracts. So you can sign your first few clients with the free plan, sign up for the paid one once you start signing more clients. And yeah, it's only fifteen dollars per user per month. Now we've got tracking important business metrics. So that'd be things like tracking the performance of your outreach, tracking the performance of like your sales calls, tracking the performance of your cash flow, just that those things in general. Now there's two options that you can use. I'm sure there's more fancier software, but just to keep it real basic, you can use Sheets, which that comes with the Google Workspace plan, which is $8 a month per user. Or you can get Excel. I haven't used Excel since 2005, since when it used to come free with the computers. Now it's, uh, I'm not sure how much it costs, but that's a, also an option that comes natively on the computer. But I don't really like it because I like working online because every time you make a change, it saves to the cloud. Whereas I'm pretty sure with 
the native Microsoft that's installed on your computer, I'm pretty sure it's not saving it to the cloud when you make changes, like you have to manually save it. So that's why I prefer Sheets. Now for accounting, this one's a boring one. I'm not gonna get into it too much because I don't know too much about it, but I use Xero. So Xero, I pretty much just use that, connect my accountant up to that. They go through and they have everything they need. I'm pretty sure one that's popular in the States everyone use is QuickBooks. I use Xero, so if you're an Australian, Xero is really well and it's well recommended. Most companies use it and my partner as well, she knows her way around it, so she was the one so tracking important business metrics. So you can use Sheets for this, which is comes with the $8 a month Google Workspace subscription, or you can use Excel. Now I like to use Sheets for this. You can use fancy software out there, but Sheets is just a lot easier to get set up. So what would one of these actually look like? So like cold email. So that'd be using a sheet like this to tra track the performance metrics and this is what it would typically look like. And you'd have a bunch of these for like every different area that you're wanting to optimize and wanting to track. And you'd make sure that you have them separate. So like if you're doing LinkedIn outreach, if you're doing Facebook outreach, you're doing Instagram outreach, have them all separately because you don't want to be tracking them all together because then you don't know which one's actually performing the best. So every new thing that you're trying to track, you want to make sure that you separate each sheet, a new sheet for everything. Now I'm at a point now where I have so many sheets, I feel like, go a bit crazy sometimes, but you know, you, you gotta do what you gotta do. It's a little, very little sacrifice to make to make sure your business is running smoothly. Uh, accounting, I'm not gonna go into this one too deep because I don't know too much about it, but Xero is what I use. My accountant loves it when he goes in and actually sees everything. QuickBooks is the popular one that they use in the States. I use Xero, so if you're an Aussie, just have a look at Xero. It's pretty good to use. Storing important files. So we've got Google Drive, you know, that just comes with the $8 a month per user plan. And in my opinion, it's definitely one of the best tools. Just the Google ecosystem in general, like you pay $8 a month per user, you get like 30 gigs of storage, you get to use all their tools, you get to record your Google Meet meetings, like Google's unmatched when it comes to price to value, that price to value ratio. Like you pay $8 a month and you get so much stuff that comes with it. So yeah, I'll always be a big advocate for that. And you know, I use Google Drive for whether it be like YouTube stuff, whether it be meaning to share stuff with other people, Google's just always gonna be a winner in my regards. Now we've got Dropbox, you know, starts at $9.99 a month. I know a few people that use it. I don't use it personally. Everything that's highlighted in yellow is stuff that I'm personally using today. Now I've got updates for team or for clients. So we've also got that, you know, I spoke about it before, like the communication, but updates for team or clients. So instead of having to hop on meetings constantly where you've just been dragged back in or like, how's this going? How's that going? You can just use Loom. Loom's $10 per month. Or even if you're, it doesn't have to be for updating teams or clients. You might even be using video outreach as a method to get new clients, which is what I used in my early days. And it works really well because most people these days, what you can do to get really good results with outreach is look at what everyone else is doing and then do the complete opposite. So if everyone's doing mass personalized, well, you can do like mass just generalized and go very broad. If everyone's just doing mass spam and sending like 50 to 100 or 500 to 1,000 emails per day, maybe you can go 50 to 100 per day of personalized videos. So if everyone's doing one thing, look at how you can do the other, or even you can marry the both. So you can take quality and quantity, marry them together, and then just do both. And then you have the best of both worlds. So yeah, enough of a rant on that, but you can use Loom, $10 per month, really, really good tool. Now verifying your leads. The last thing you wanna do is scrape your list, have your list, and then just blast it. You don't wanna upload it straight away into your thing into your tool, like if you're using Instantly, Smart Lead, whatever the tool is, because you, if you upload it right away, well, what's gonna happen is there's gonna be like a hundred, let's say you have a lead list of a thousand. You can probably say that at least a hundred of those people are gonna bounce back because they don't even exist. And when you have a bounce rate that's over 5%, that's telling Google, fuck this guy, he's spamming everyone let's deactivate his Google Workspace account or let's just send him to spam every time he sends an email. That's the last thing you want because if, especially if you're doing a lot of personalization in your emails, if you're sending like 1,000, 2,000 a day, 
and none of those are landing in the inbox, well, it's useless because most of the time people aren't even going to see it. And if it does land in the spam and people see it, they're going to think it's scam because there's a reason that you're in the spam. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to use these tools. I use bulk email checker. So that's pay as you go. Let's have a look at this bulk email checker. Log in. So as you can see here, I've got 6,420 valid email credits. And look, even if you sign up today, it's look, it's got a 25% off discount. It was already cheap, but on top of that, you're getting 25% off. Look, if you come in here, 25,000 email credits verifying, $21, that's a steal. Now the thing is, because of the way that they verify their credits, there's going to be maybe 20%, 30% of these credits or the emails that you put in that are going to be catch all. So it's unknown. So what you can do is I've got these other tools here. So I use find email and scrubby as well. So let's say you upload a thousand into bulk email checker and it gives you back 600 verified, 300 unknown and a hundred that are invalid. So what you can do is you can take the 300 that are unknown and then you upload it into a tool like Scrubby. That should be to a tool like Scrubby or Find Email. And the reason you want to do that is because their algorithms are a bit better for actually finding emails. I'm pretty sure they use a technology that actually sends emails to the emails that you upload. So then you can actually see if it's a real person or if it's not a real person. But the thing is, these ones are a lot more expensive. So $97 per month, you get 5,000 email finding credits and 5,000 email verifying credits. And then with a scrubby, it's half of that. So you get 2,500 of each. So what you can do instead of just using them to verify all, just verify the ones that are left over. And then say from that 300 that would have been unknowns, you can safely say that at least you, you'll find at least another 150 from them. Like every time I upload the list, it finds like 50 to 65% extra from those unknown emails so that you're not leaving leads on the table. Now this is especially important if you have a small TAM. So let's say there's 10,000 people total in your market that you're reaching out to. It's more important than ever that you actually use this way of verifying your leads. Whereas if you have a TAM that's like, a million people, you might not have to go this deep and you might not care as much. But if it's, you know, if it's something that's worth your while and you have a small TAM, I definitely recommend using these two tools so that you have as many leads as possible and that you're not leaving leads on the table. Now for writing, you can use Hemingway app or Grammarly. Gram I mean, if you have really good English, maybe you went to Ivy League school, maybe you have really good grammar. So maybe you don't even need to use these tools. But for people like me where I can't do that good a grammar. And even my English, <laughs> even though English is my first language, I don't know how to speak properly because I went to a public school, but we'll leave that for another day. Grammarly is something good if you have a broken English or your grammar is not that good. Hemingway app is if you don't know how to write concisely or clearly, you can use Hemingway app. Now bonuses. So these aren't softwares. These are tools that I currently use. So I've got this one here, Shaw Microphone, MB7. The most popular ones, the SM7B, but you had to get a lot more attachments and like all this stuff. And I've already got this massive PC that's like this big on my desk. So we don't need more stuff on my desk that's just crowding it. So short MV7, USB mic, really, really good quality. How do I sound? Do I sound good? As you can see, sounds really, really good. We've got Logitech Brio. So this is the webcam that I'm looking at now. Uh, pretty sure it records in 4K. There's probably some better ones out there these days, but that's what I use. Having good video and a good audio quality is going to help you on your calls, guys. Last thing you want is jumping on a call and the prospect's like, what was that? What did you say? Oh, like your audio is crackly. You don't want any of that. You want to put the odds in your favor and turn the scales in your favor as much as possible. So having good video, having good mic quality is unmatched. And then the last thing is this, a standing desk. So I've got an Omni desk. So this is for my people who work from home. You know, they're working like eight, 10, 12, 16 hour days, sitting down on your ass all day. And just, that's not good for your posture. It's not good for anyone's posture. We weren't designed to be sitting down 10, 12, 16, 14 hours cooped up inside. So we can minimize the damage done from sitting down all day. Let's get a standing desk. Now I'll be honest, I don't use it that much. Typically once I start getting a little bit of pain in my back, like feel a little bit of a pinch, I will 
make sure I stand up and like I use it. And then once my feet start hurting, I sort of just alternate between the two. Wait till my feet hurt, sit down, wait till my back hurts, stand up. I'm not sure if it's the optimal way. Usually at the start of the day when I have most energy, I'll use it standing. But towards the back end of the day when I'm getting a little bit more tired, I still wanna be doing work, so I'll just put it into sitting. But yeah, if I get a sore back, I use that. And if I don't, I will be sitting down. Now, hopefully you found this video valuable. Hopefully you can actually go take some of these tools and implement some of them in your business because you know, these are what I use, they help a ton. Most people who are that deep into the marketing agency space will probably be using a lot of these tools. But for you guys who are beginners and you know maybe you're not aware of a lot of these tools, I recommend that you go check a lot of these out. And the main ones would be Google Workspace, just getting that set up and then having good mic quality and good video quality. And then something that helps with your back as well. Now, maybe another thing I'll put in here is a good chair as well. Now, if you run an established marketing agency that's doing at least $25,000 per month and you have at least three good case studies and you wanna potentially add an additional 60 to $120,000 a month within the next six to 12 months, click the first link that's in the description. Now, as always, you're not obliged to it at all. The main thing is that you watch these videos, you implement some of the teachings, and then you get some results and some value just in general. But hopefully you enjoyed this video. I'll see you later.